This tutorial is a supplement for a previous one that's called how to create a template file for an Alan Bradley compact logics PLC. Now if you need a refresh about that tutorial, you can click on the icon that you see right now on the screen. Now for that tutorial, it only recognized the basic PLC elements and these are the controller which is 1769L23E and it also recognized the embedded I.O. so discrete input on slot number one and discrete output on slot number two. That tutorial did not recognize any analog module and that's the objective of this tutorial. Now to add an analog module, of course we need the model number. Right now I'm going to provide it to you. So to add it, right click on the expansion I.O. folder. The first option is new module. Once you click on this one, you will have this box which is select a module. Over here you can select any category that you want. Now as you want, since we, we need to add an analog card or analog module, you click on the plus sign next to it. And over here you have a list of modules that are recognized in the software. Now, you don't have to memorize this number, it will be provided to you. The one we are interested in right now ends with an F2F. You click on this one, and after you're done, you click OK. This will take you to a new window that's titled New Window. The first step is you need to give it a name. The module that we have just added is a compound card, i.e. you can connect to it with analog input channels and analog output channels. So you can simply go with a simple name like Analog. The second thing we need to configure in this card is the input configuration. For this card, we can connect up to four channels, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, the one that we, on the labs, in our labs, you can only connect two, but you can go ahead and select all four. It won't make any difference. What's really important, though, is your data format. By default, it's for row proportional, and you can actually change it to other options. Right now, what row proportional is, is nothing but the binary equivalent to the input voltage. It could be represented in either binary or decimal number system. It's easier to go with the engineering units. And this card interpretation of the engineering units is nothing but the digital millivolts of the input voltage. In other, in other words, if you had 2 volts input over here, the card is going to generate 2000 digital format. If you had 3.5 volts, for example, then this card is going to generate 3500, which is the digital millivolts proportional to the input. So right now in this tutorial, we're going to go with the engineering units and uh, because in a few minutes, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this on the software and that's the one that I'm using. This is the configuration I'm using. The last thing we need to configure is the output configuration. Again, if our program or programs are going to control or drive some analog outputs, then we need to select these two as well. At the end, you click OK. And right now, as you can see, under the expansion I.O. folder, you see the card have just been added the f2f card is added right now right now i'm going to demonstrate this on the software and see if this configuration actually works let's go there what i did right now is synchronize my programming station that's running the rs logic 5000 with a plc that has an input source a power source input voltage connected to it so right now if you look over here this is the power source that we have and it goes all the way from zero to five volts just for testing purposes and to the left side you see that's the uh, millivolts, which is the digital value proportional to this input. So as I crank this guy up, so right now it's around like th 3 volts basically, you see right now the digital millivolts, because that was our configuration, is 3000. If I keep going all the way to 5 volts, here we go, this is the 5000. Take this back down, as you can see as you go up and down, this one is following it, because that's what the analog card is doing. All that it does, it takes an analog input and converts it based on our configuration to engineering units. And the engineering unit for this one is the millivolts. So right now you can see the analog input is at 3 volts right now. This could be the reading for temperature transmitter or flow or whatever. And the card is taking this one and converting it as you see it over here. All what you need to do right now in your program is to take this digital reading and use it for any scaling purposes. You might go, for example, as you go over here from 1 to 5 volts, basically, analog input side, this, the card will generate 1,000 to 5,000, and you can take this input range and scale it to any pros value that you want. Could be 0 to 100 degrees centigrade or 800, 1200 kPa, any kind of engineering units you're looking for. And that's pretty much it.